Hey everybody, Aaron Spink here from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Looking forward to this uh, drum and music talk today uh, here on WhatsApp through Drum Gurus. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about today is uh, a little bit about odd groupings and being able to use those odd groupings, uh, not just in a musical way, but to kind of give you guys a bit of a formula to understanding how to utilize them to your advantage in music. So why don't we start checking that out? So when I say odd groupings, what I'm really talking about are groups of threes, fives, and sevens. And ultimately, the way that I'm looking at is from a polyrhythmic or a, um, a metrically implied way of thinking. Uh, what does that mean? Well, here's just a really good example of that. If I started playing a normal groove, you know, just like 16th notes in like 4-4 four, four time, one. that a lot of us drummers that, you know, myself included, a lot of you who are watching this right now, already know how to play, and probably don't even realize you're doing it. It's just something that we apply in everything that we're doing. Uh, and it could be something like what I played here. It could be rhythms like claves. to be a part of the rhythm that cycles back around to the beginning again. And in a lot of cases when we play these simple rhythms, like threes, they're really easy to understand how, how to fit because we can just naturally play them. But when we get to some of those other deeper rhythms like fives and sevens, it's really important to understand how the formula works for that. So the formula works like this. Essentially, the number of the group that you're putting in place, so in this case, groups of three, it will take that many bars for it to come back around to one again. Here's an example. So I'm gonna start off with a metronome, not too fast. Probably a little slower than that. So let's, let's go, let's say 78. We're gonna go 78, and what I'm gonna do so I'm using a, a metronome app called Polynome, by the way. If any of you run iOS on your phone, so uh, Apple, uh, MacBook, or anything like that, you can get Polynome. So P-O-L-Y, capital N-O-M-E. Costs a little bit of money. It's one of the best uh, uh, drumming and musical metronome tools that you can possibly find. So go check them out. You can even check them out on Instagram, at Polynome app. it as a really good tool for what I'm going to do here. So in the polynome app, what I can do is actually put in an auto counting setting. So my metronome actually sounds like this now. One, two, three, four. So it actually is going to count the beats for me. And that way, I can focus on now counting the groups of threes for you and getting it to come back around again. So like I mentioned, the formula is the number of the odd grouping that you're putting into your time it will take that many bars to come around. So in this case, groups of three will take three bars to cycle back to the beginning again. Watch. One. Sorry, my video got cut off, so I had to edit it, edit it, and then send it. So now here's the pattern I'm gonna do. <laughs> so again, the formula, 
the group that you're doing, in this case we're doing threes, the odd grouping, it will take that many bars to come around. So three bars to cycle back around. One, two, three, four. One, two, bars for it to come back around. So this is true for any grouping that you do that is odd against an even amount of notes. So three, and in this case we're doing groups of threes in a 4-4 four, four setting. So it can be the same with fives and it can be the same with seven. Okay, so here's an example of doing it with five. So remember now the formula is we're doing a group of five, odd grouping of five, that's how many bars it'll take to come back around. One, two, that was five bars. One more time and we'll count. One, two, three, four. So bar one, two, three, four, two, three. that as well uh, do sevens now it's hard to <laughs> it's hard to count some of this stuff while doing it so uh, I'll send this and then I'll do seven so here is sevens which will take seven bars to come cycle around. One, two, go so the formula will always work and the cool part about it is that so I'm doing it over 16 notes uh, so 1e e and a 2e and a 3e and a 4e and a 1e e and a 2e e and so on so that's it's just group of four, four notes like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, seven more times. The formula works, <coughs> pardon me, the formula works no matter what subdivision you use that's the coolest part about it so I'm going to put the metronome up just a little bit more and I'm going to do fives and sevens on triplets. Why not three? Well, triplets are already three. So that's like saying uh, doing fours and sixteenth notes. How many bars would it take to come around? Well, we'll just take one. But when we're doing, actually, I'll use a good example. I'll do fours on triplets. It's going to take four bars to come back around. So check this out. So now it's the opposite. When you do odd meters, even groupings will now take the same amount of time. All right, actually, I'll send that in a separate video. So here are the sevens, and then I'll do the other ones. So um, when, we're, when we're playing triplet subdivisions, uh, just to make sure everybody knows about that, that's like a 6-8 or a 12-8 feel. So that would be something similar to this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, or like a shuffle feel. So when I put groups of four over top of it, funny enough, I said it is four bars will cycle around. It's it's true, but it actually will only take one bar for it to come back around in terms of the main downbeat. What will happen though, and again, if you, it depends if you're thinking of it in six eight or twelve eight. But what will happen though is, let's say I was playing paradiddles as my group of fours. That would actually be one bar, and it's going to take a second bar of twelve eight to come back around to start on my right hand. So realistically, if I do this in six, eight, it's gonna take four times, or in this case, four bars of it to come back around. So that would sound like this. One, two, three, four. So one, two, one, two, one, two, three, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four. Or you can think of it as one, two, three, four, one. But it always works in cycles. That's the great thing about it. Now, let's talk about fives and sevens. Those are the real odd ones we want to get to. I think a lot of you already feel comfortable enough with what I just did there, but that just gives you an idea of how this stuff is broken down. 
The fives and the sevens though, it will work the exact same way. In groups of five, we'll take five bars to come back around to the beginning again. So here would be fives. One, two, three, four, one, two, Five bars. So one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, one. So the formula still works. And when you know that formula, it becomes really easy to apply it and learn how to apply it in different ways. Um, so what I mean by that is being able to take that and put it into either a, a conceptual idea like a groove or a fill or something else that you're playing and being able to understand not only where to make it fit but how to get out of it. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit more by heading over to the kit and showing you there. So starting out on the pad with the formulas that I talked about is a really good way to initially get this process going. And just for anybody who's unaware, the sticking patterns that I was just using for those different groupings. Um, so threes, one easy way to do it is to just play right, left, left, right, left, left. For your fives, I'm doing a, a, a five stroke roll sticking. So right, left, left, right, right, and then it flips the other hand. Left, right, right, left, left. And then for um, for the sevens, it's seven stroke rolls sticking. So right, left, left, right, right, left, left, back to the right hand again. You can also do that one in the opposite hand too. So left, right, right, left, left, right, right, and then back in the left. Um, now taking that to the drum kit is, is just being aware of how that cycle works and then applying it. So. I already showed you a little bit of threes with my bass drum. I can do the exact same thing with the fives. So starting out with just a basic 16th note groove and then uh, being able to take it and apply it in the same way. So one, two, three, cycle of the form looks more even so I did about eight bars with a fill coming out of it but I just kept the, the cycle going of the fives and as long as I know how the cycle works it'll help me be able to get into it and like I said be able to then get out of it um, so you can eventually like I, I mentioned before do the same with sevens and that's just in a groove setting when it comes to playing different fill ideas that's also very important as well One, two, three. understood the, that formula. So that's one of the first steps of being able to take this, start putting it on the drum kit and understanding what's happening.